The FedLife Podcast is presented by Serving Those Who Serve, a fiduciary, fee-based financial planning firm serving federal government employees and retirees all over the country. This podcast is for informational purposes only and is not intended to be taken as financial advice. All listeners should consult their personal advisors before taking any action. The opinions expressed by our hosts are their own and do not reflect the views, policies, or position of Raymond James. Securities are offered through Raymond James Financial Services, Inc., member FINRA, SIPC. Investment advisory services are offered through Raymond James Financial Services Advisors, Inc. Serving those who serve is not a registered broker-dealer and is independent of Raymond James Financial Services, Inc. And now, here are your hosts. Dan Seip serves as a branch manager for Raymond James Financial Services and Serving Those Who Serve. Ed Zerndorfer is our guest and federal benefits expert in the space. Hello and welcome to this episode of the FedLife Podcast. I am your host, Dan Seip. Additionally, I'm the branch manager here at Serving Those Who Serve and Lee Seip and Associates. And I want to begin, as I always do, by saying thank you. Thank you for taking the time to listen. We know your time is valuable or to view if you're catching the video. And thank you for your service to the government, to the country, to me, to everyone. You don't hear that enough, but you will always hear it here. The other thing you always hear here is the guru, Ed Zarndorfer. He's back with us once again as part of our ongoing mission to reach, teach, and serve you, the career civilian Fed. Once again, we will follow Ed's Fed Zone articles. You can find those at fed-zone.com. This gives us one more way to reach and teach. And I know it's not April. But we're talking taxes. So first up, we'll follow Ed's article on the IRS increasing estimated tax penalties and what feds need to know. So Ed, your column opens by stating the Internal Revenue Service has bumped up the penalties for underpayment of estimated taxes and underwithholding from pay. So Ed, let's begin with what are estimated taxes and why are feds might need to pay them? Well, Dan, as you know, I have a uh, accounting and tax practice, and I do a lot of tax returns. And uh, I got to tell you that I emphasize to my clients that tax planning is throughout the year. It doesn't stop on April 15th. And in order to understand what estimated tax tax payments are, a little bit of a history lesson. As you know, Dan, the federal income tax has been around since 1916. And back in those days, between 1916 and World War II, you paid your taxes when you filed your tax return. Just did whatever you owed, you filed the return, it was very simple, and then you paid paid whatever you owed. Well, World War II came around, and Congress decided the Treasury needs money to fund the war. So they decided, this took effect in 1943, that people who work are going to have their federal income taxes withheld from their paychecks, and the employer will send in the withheld taxes to the Treasury. This way, the Treasury has the money right away. They don't have to wait till April 15th, what well, actually used to be March 15th back in those days. I can remember the filing deadline was March 15th. But the fact of the matter is that the federal government had its money now, currently, to pay its bills. Sure. So they decided that anybody who works their employer is going to withheld federal income taxes. Well, there was a slight problem with that because individuals could say, well, you know something, I'm not working or I'm self-employed and I don't have to pay any taxes until I find my taxes. No, I don't withhold taxes. So there was sort of a, if you will, a gaming of the system in sure. the sense that, well, I can avoid paying taxes each month without my paycheck because I'm not getting a paycheck. I'm self-employed. Or here's another example, investment income. I know, Dan, you're, you're, you are an a, a investment broker and yep. you invest people's money and they get interest and dividends and capital gains. Um, there's no withholding from that. So therefore, if you owe any taxes or any gains you have received, when do you pay those taxes? You defy your income taxes. So IRS decided, here's an idea, and Congress went for it. We're going to have individuals who do not have withholding from their paychecks or having too little withholding from their paychecks pay what's called estimated tax payments quarterly on April 15th, June 15th, September 15th, and the following January 15th. 
This way, sure. whatever they owe during that quarter, because there are four quarters of the year, they'll pay it sooner than later, sooner than later. So that's where the idea of estimated tax payment started. Now, there's still a slight problem because here's the rule. Here's the rule. Here's the rule regarding your withholding. When you file your income taxes come April 15th, if you end up owing more than $1,000, that's your balance due. You could possibly be subject to what's called an underpayment penalty, underpayment penalty, because you didn't pay in enough money. So the rule has been that if you are, if you, if you are uh, getting withholding from your paycheck, you must pay in, you must pay in at least 90% of that year's federal tax liability by the last month that you have withholding, which is December. You have to have 90% withhold. If gotcha. you're paying estimated tax payments, you must pay in with each estimated tax payment at least 90% of what your tax liability is that quarter. And if you end up owing more than $1,000 come the following April 15th when you file taxes, there, there will not be any penalty. It's called a sort of a safe harbor, a safe harbor. Gotcha. And uh, so individuals who know for a fact they're not having enough with like federal employees, if you're a federal employee and you know for a fact you're not having enough taxes withheld each month, you really have to pay, uh, you have to pay estimated taxes. That's an eight quarterly. Um, I want to say this, I want to say this, that I get this question all the time. From clients, how much should I have had withheld? How much should I have off my paycheck? Yeah, uh, is enough. And come when I file the taxes for the previous year, I say to the client, "Well, you didn't do too good. You, you had you, end, you ended up more than a thousand dollars. You better think about either requesting from your agency to have more federal income taxes withheld or pay estimated taxes. Well, I don't want to pay estimated taxes. So I know I'm going to." <laughs> I'm going to forget. I'm going to forget to pay the payments. So I think I'll ask my employer, my my agency, to, you know, I'll fill out a form, a W-4 form, to have more federal income taxes withheld. But you know, Dan, that W-4 form that you fill out, the IRS has to figure out how much you should have withholding. It is, it is a real, it takes a PhD in accounting to figure out how to fill out that form. I'm sorry, it's very challenging. So invariably, my clients end up having not enough federal taxes taken out, or worse, I think, or almost as bad, they have too much federal taxes taken out because I'm the firmer believer. You shouldn't have more than you really have to have withheld. If you end up with a big refund, man, sure. I feel like you're not doing anybody a favor, especially yourself. The only one you're really helping is the federal government. You get, you're getting an interest free loan and being a part of a big refund. So the fact of the matter is, you uh, federal employees as well as retirees, because federal retirement benefits, the FERS annuity, the CSRS annuity, Social Security benefits, TSP, are also fully taxable. Now, you can sure. have federal taxes without <coughs> out and out from your CSRS annuity. You can have federal, <coughs> excuse me, federal taxes, income taxes without from your Social Security, from your Social Security payments. And, you, of course, you can have federal taxes withheld well, from your TSP. But I still get a lot of questions. How much should I have with help? If I'm a federal retiree, I don't know. What should I do? Gotcha. And, you know, unfortunately, there's a lot of bad water cool inf information out there about, oh, hey, if you have a mortgage, you can claim this many exemptions. And, you know, and if you have kids and if you have this and you have that. <clears throat> and I'm sure you've encountered in your tax practice. I've certainly encountered it in the advisory practice where once in a blue moon, we run across somebody who's subject to a backup withholding order because of stuff like that. Oh yeah. I'm sure it's, you run into it, that. Yes, Dan. There's a lot of bad information out there and federal employees who in fact are, are not withholding enough as well as retirees. I advise them strongly to talk to a qualified tax advisor. You can't do this on your own. Let me give you an example. Sure. I got a new client last year, and when I, they're both federal, both the, the cup, both a, a couple, two couples, and both are federal employees, the welfare employees. They're both retired, and they only had, they only have federal retirement income, only federal retirement income, TSP, CIA, VERS annuities, 
want to stay in Social Security. And they owed, one couple owed $15,500 when they filed their taxes. Ouch. With a penalty, Dan, with an IRS felony under withholding penalty of two, about $2,100. And the other couple owed not quite as much, $11,000, $11, but they still had a penalty, under withholding penalty of $600. And that's money thrown away. Dan, I consider IRS penalties to be money is wasted money. It doesn't have sure. to happen. Agreed. I, I still get a lot of resistance from clients about that. Why do I got to pay estimated taxes? Especially I have clients who are not federal employees who are self-employed. They have a business. And they say, now, why do I got to pay the estimated taxes? I'll just pay what I do come, come April 15th. I said, it doesn't work that way. He said, I don't understand why. Now, here's how, yeah. I, here's how I try to explain estimated taxes to especially self-employed people. I have a client who started their business a couple of years ago, uh, a, a widow, and she's very much into fine dinnerware. She likes to sell dishes. Okay. And when she started her business, she came to me for advice. And I was happy to give it to her. And I said, you got to set up your business. You have to have a business plan. You have to have an accounting system, and you also have to be aware that you're going to have to pay estimated taxes. What? Estimated taxes? What is that all about? Well, uh, you're not having any withholding. You know, you're know, you going to take a draw from your net cash flow each month. Yeah. You're not paying any taxes on that. You're taking the money out, and you're going to owe tax on that cash flow. But I'll pay the cash. I, I am prepared. I'll set the money aside to pay the taxes due. Come April 15th. I said, it doesn't work that way. She said, why? I said, IRS is like a business. The federal government should run itself like a business. They got income coming in, taxes, and they got expenses. And they got to have enough in, enough coming in to pay all the bills, or else we're going to have a big deficit like we have. Sure. She said, well, so what does that mean? It says, they don't want to wait till April 15th to get all the tax revenue coming in. They want to get it throughout the year, throughout the year. And she said to me, I still don't understand why it applies to me. I said, okay, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you another, I'm going to give you another scenario here. Suppose you have someone come into your store and says, wow, that's a beautiful set of dinnerware. How much does it cost? Oh, the full set will cost. $5,000. All right. I think that's reasonable. And I said, if the person would say, I really like to buy it. However, I got a problem. I don't have the money now to pay it for. I don't have the money now. But I know come December 31st, I know I'll have that money. Could I buy it now? And we'll set up a, a, a contract here, so to speak, that I'll pay you come, come December 31st. And she said, so I still don't understand how it applies to me. I said, well, another customer comes in and says, wants well, to buy something. An $8,000 dinner, $8,000 dinner were set. And they say it the same way. Every client you have is going to say, I'm going to pay you by December 31st. Tell me something. Would you exist? Would your business be able to exist that way if everybody's nope. going to pay you at the end of the year? The same thing as IRS. The IRS cannot afford, the federal government cannot afford to be paid in full come April 15th. They want to get gotcha. it out there. And that's what, gotcha. that, you're not getting withholding from your paycheck. You're going to have to gotcha. estimate taxes. So with regards to estimated taxes, there's an amount that you're expected to remit. And if you don't, there's an interest charge. And that charge went up, correct? Yes. Back in 2021, Dan, the interest charge was 3%. And what is the interest charge? It's the interest charge on the amount of your under withholding. Sure. Um, but then interest rates went up. As you know, Dan, it's now 8%. It turned out to be 8% starting in 2023. Almost tripled. Ouch. Ouch. Almost tripled. I have a statistic here I'm going to share. The average penalty increased was one hundred and fifty dollars. Was the average was the average penalty in two thousand twenty two? In two thousand twenty three, it went up to five hundred and fifty dollars. That was the average penalty. That's wow. non deductible. That interest penalty is non deductible. 
It is money thrown away. It can be avoided. And the, and the gotcha. main reason of the increase of the average under withholding penalties because of the increase in, in, in interest rates. Interest rates went up. So, sure. and those interest rates may stay high again. Gotcha. Now, in your article, you also talk about there's a feature called safe harbor, but you caution people to be careful with that. Yeah. So, walk okay. us through this one. Okay. So, here's the safe, there, here is the safe harbor. That if you pay in enough through withholding, you pay in uh, and or estimated tax payments, you will not be subject to under withholding penalty. It's called the safe harbor payment. And specifically, it says the following. Let's look at the under withholding. The, let's look at the safe harbor for 2024, for the year 2024. So that's where the year we are. When you filed your taxes, if you expect your, I'm sorry, if your adjusted gross income back in 2023 was $150,000 or less, and during 2024, you have, you pay in at least 90% of whatever your 2023 tax liability was, when you file your taxes, you will not be subject to an underwithholding penalty, no matter how much you owe. Okay. Now, if your adjusted gross income was more than one hundred fifty thousand dollars during two thousand, do, 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 uh, let me back up here. I made a slight mistake here. If you pay in a hundred percent, not ninety percent, a hundred percent, if you ha- if your adjusted gross income was uh, during two thousand twenty three was more than was less than one hundred fifty thousand, if you pay in a hundred thousand, a hundred percent of whatever your 2023 tax liability is during 2024 through withholding, through estimated tax payments. Then when you file your taxes next spring, if you no matter what you owe, you're not going to be subject to under withholding penalty. If your adjusted okay. gross income during 2023 was more than 150000 and you pay in 110% of your 2023 federal income tax liability, that's your liability for the year. Through withholding and estimated taxes, you will not be subject to an under withholding penalty, no matter what you owe. So that's called the safe harbor. But there's a problem. There is a problem with the safe harbor. Because okay. what individuals have to keep in mind is that the safe harbor, the safe harbor provision applies quarterly, not annually. Ooh. I said earlier that there are four quarters of the year. Let me just run to what those quarters are. This is the IRS quarters of the year. It doesn't coincide with the calendar quarters. The first quarter of the year is January 1st through March 31st. The second quarter is April 1st through May 31st, not June 30th. The third quarter of the year is July 1st. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The third quarter of the year is June 1st through August 31st, and the fourth quarter is September 1st through December 31st. Those are the four quarters of the year. Estimated tax payments are due for the first quarter on April 15th. That's for the first quarter. For the second quarter, June 15th, third quarter, September 15th, and for the fourth quarter, it's the following January 15th. All right, so let's get back to the safe harbor. What the safe harbor says is I said about the 100%, you know, for people who had AGI less than 100,000, had a less than that, their AGI was, was $150,000 or less. They pay in 100% of their 2023 tax liability, but they have to pay in during the quarter of 2020. Whatever their tax liability was for the first quarter of 2023, that's January 1st through March, March 31st. They sure. have to, during 2023, 2024, during the first quarter, pay in at least 100% of whatever that tax liability was in 2023. And the same thing applies for the second quarter, third quarter, and fourth quarter. I'm saying this, Dan, because you could, an individual in 2024, could incur a big 
capital gain if they sold sure. the stock. Let's say, or they could let's say they converted a raw a traditional IRA to a Roth IRA in a particular quarter. Well, in that case, they're going to incur a big liability. Is that now? How am I going to pay the tax on that? How am I going to pay the tax on the rest of the taxes? But if assuming that you're just you know, again you're adjusted gross income is not ninety five thousand, that if you pay in enough to the estimated tax payment for that quarter that matches the quarter for the previous year, you will not be subject to a penalty. Again, once again, Dan, you have to think quarterly, not annually. Not sure. I was these other withholding penalties, and this is what I tell my clients. I tell my clients, Dan, if you when they when they and I say goodbye to them after tax season, I said. If you incur anything significant in terms of a capital gain, you win the lottery, sell your house, and you got a sure. huge capital gain, I want to be the first to know about it. Don't start bragging to people. You come to you call me first because I'm going to give you some advice. This way, we'll make sure that you're not going to end up paying another withholding penalty. Because once again, I tell our clients, I detest penalties. They're not necessary. You then you can avoid those penalties. It's money thrown away. Gotcha. So, folks, under remitting is bad; can cost you a bunch. But Ed, you have some suggestions for our listeners for how they can head that off. Yes, and this is some good advice here. Typically, individuals. I'm going to give an example here. Let's say someone wants to take money out of their IRA or their TSP, their TSP. And typically, uh, my experience has been, it's usually at the end of the year. They wait as long as possible. They want to build up their account. And obviously, when it comes to taking money out of the traditional TSB or traditional IRA, it's federally taxable. It's federally taxable. Sure. And the uh, TSB does withhold federal income tax. And you ask your IRA custodian, they withhold federal income tax. So you think, well, I took out. $30,000 $30,000 for my TSD, for example, and I'm in a 22% federal income tax bracket. Well, I think I'll ask them to take out 22% of $30,000, which, what is that, $6,600 or something like that, and that should be okay. Be careful, though. You say you're in a 22% tax bracket. Right. Taking out $30,000 could bump you up into the next bracket, which is 24%. Be careful. Absolutely. So. You, you, you contact your account and says, yeah, you better have more tax withheld just to be on the safe side. It turns out that wasn't enough, and you might owe a penalty because you're going to owe more than $1,000. So here's a suggestion. Take out even more. Take out, instead of taking out an additional, what, 6000 let's say $600, 2% to, to 30000 take out $3,000. What? Gotcha. Why so much? That's going to give me less money. Here's the thing. By taking out the additional three thousand dollars, it is possible. It is possible that you will not be subject to under withholding penalty if you owe more than that. Why? Because when it comes to withholding, Dan, IRS considers the withholding to be evenly distri- like the, 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 evenly distributed throughout the year, each month. So if somebody took out three an additional three thousand dollars, it's if they they took out was three thousand divided by, by, by twelve, two hundred and fifty dollars each month. And if they use the safe harbor rule, it could it could result in their not being subject to an under withholding penalty. So taking gotcha. out additional withholding, no matter what time of the year, no matter what time of the year, it's considered to be spread throughout the year. Spread throughout the year. It's just a suggestion I have. And I again, I try to look for ways to avoid those penalties. And this is working. Sure. One example. And in the, in the column that I wrote, I gave that example. There's someone who took out a huge amount of money. Now. In terms of requesting more federal withholding, it's been my experience. Sometimes it's very hard to get the TSB to take out more money. It's just this experience I've had to have more money taken out. Also, for those federal annuitants who are getting a CSRS annuity or a FERS annuity, you can go onto your services online account with OPM and request additional federal income tax withholding. But sometimes it doesn't work. Or they started too late. And then you end up, you know, you have, you know, you might be sorry to withhold it. So it's been my experience, though, working with clients that 
brokerages. I know, I know Dan, you, you are, you know, you are yep. a risk yep. and associate with Raymond James, including Raymond James, that the brokerages are a lot better when it comes to requesting additional federal, and we're going to talk here in a moment about state withholding. Keep in mind, yep. the TSP does not withhold state income taxes. And you have to be concerned, we'll talk about that here in a moment, that you have to also be worried about under withholding when it comes to state with states. The states Absolutely. have been withholding too. So well, that's that's a great segue, Ed. Let's let's go into that because that's uh, that's kind of how your article wraps up. Don't forget about state taxes and uh, having to pay them. Yes, and there are forty two states and the District of Columbia that have state income taxes, and guess what? All of them have under withholding penalties. I live in Maryland, and you know when you could own you could you could owe a under withholding penalty in Maryland if you owe more than. Five hundred dollars, not a thousand. Five hundred dollars, and Maryland has increased its penalty too. So once again, you know the states have safe harbors similar to what the federal has. Talk to your tax advisor about that if you feel you're going to owe state income taxes. Please, I advise my clients, advise federal employees and retirees. It's a good idea, and it's great to do your own taxes. Turbo Tax, for example, is a good program. But they're not going to walk you through this. You need to talk for a qualified tax professional. And now is a good time of year. Now is the time. It's July. You don't oh, start yeah. doing this. You don't start doing this in December. You got to start. You got to think about now. What's going to happen between now and the end of the year? Yeah, because so, you know your accountant's probably recovered from April fifteenth, so uh, it's a good time to reach out. Boy, I'll tell you, you know, and to our listeners, this is one of the things that I love about what we do here at Serving Those Who Serve. Uh, we're going to go into things like this. You're going to find podcasts on this. Uh, you know, there's there's more and more content out there. We realize that you're, you're using your valuable time to listen to us. So we want to make sure that we're giving you stuff that you're not going to find anywhere else. And it frosts me when I see other orgs trying to jam everything that somebody might ever need to know into one hour or even three hours or something like that. You need to take the time to cover these things. If this doesn't affect you, that's great. You don't have that. You don't have to listen to it. But if it does, and this gets you pointed in the right direction, it can make a huge difference for you. So, Ed, on behalf of all the feds, I'm going to say it again. Thank you for being such a great resource. My pleasure. It's always a pleasure helping federal employees and retirees. We're here to help. We're here to serve. That's why it's called Sorry Goes to Serve. Information is out there, podcasts, webinars, columns, Absolutely. blogs, everything's out there for your information. Whatever way you like it, we got it. Well, folks, that's a wrap. We are serving us to serve. Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss an episode on YouTube or Spotify. Remember to share it with your friends and strangers. Don't forget, Ed mentioned them, those live webinars every single week. Just go to our website, swserve.com. You'll see the blue webinar button. Click it. It'll take you to the landing page. You will see all the offerings that we have in no, we're not going to try and jam everything into one or three hours. We got hours and hours and hours of content there. And best of all, we'll come straight to you with it. The guru will come to you, reach you where you are, teach you where you are, and above all, serve you where you are. Sign up for one, sign up for all, and share it with the friends. They will thank you. Be sure to read Ed every month in the Fed Zone. That's fed-zone.com. So this column is there so you can go back and refer to it. So for Ed, the crew at Serving is Serve, and me, Dan Sipe, I will close as I always do by saying good luck. Godspeed, and above all, remember, it's your fed life. Make it a great one because you deserve it. Stay well, everybody. We are out. <laughs>